So what I'd like to do is start with where we left off, which is an uncoated naked ER vesicle. So once the, coat, once the COP2 coat has been removed by SAR1 GTP hydrolysis, so the, the coat self-destructed and you have a naked membrane vesicle that contains the ER cargo, the next step is ensuring that this vesicle ends up docking and fusing with the appropriate membrane compartment. In this case, the appropriate compartment is the Golgi, John drawn as this more oblong membrane compartment. So, so how does the ER vesicle know to fuse with the cis Golgi as opposed to, for example, accidentally going back and fusing with the ER or going to fuse with a lysosome or any one of a number of other membrane compartments that are exist in the cell? So what this illustrates as I walk you through the components is a really common mechanism of if you do something that's irreversible, like membrane fusion, so if you bring these two membranes together and allow them to merge, it's virtually impossible to unmerge them and reverse that process. So anytime you see a, an irreversible process in biology, what you often see is multiple checkpoint type steps to ensure that everything is correct before allowing it to go forward. And you see this concept a lot in the cell cycle, but this is the first time that we've really seen it in the class. So the way this works is there's two sets of protein-protein interactions that are used to ensure that the vesicle docks with the appropriate compartment. So there's first, first set of proteins are RABs, and they interact with RAB effectors. So what are RABs? RABs are small GTPases. So as I've told you previously, small GTPases are switches and timers that run the entire cell. If you understand how small GTPases work, you understand how almost everything in the cell works, or at least 25 to 50% of it, and the rest is probably the hydrophobic effect. So where are the RABs? So RABs, and I'll just draw these guys in blue. RABs are small GTPases, and they interact with the vesicle, the ER vesicle, and they're loaded with GTP. And they have a RAB effector, which I'll draw in red, which is like a catcher's mitt that acts as a, as a docking mechanism. And these also act as gaps for the, so those are GTPase activating proteins. And what that means, is, I'll go into in a second. But this, in some sense, is a molecular handshake. The RAB interacts with the RAB effector, and that allows a first pass at knowing whether the vesicle is tethered to the right compartment. Now there's another set of proteins, and I'll put them in a different color, since I have the power of screencasting at my command, I'll pick some awful green color. So we have the snares, and we have T-snares, which also interact with V-snares. So what are snares? Snares are the proteins that mediate the actual membrane fusion. And I'll tell you how they work, but they work in these pairs where you'll have T snares are on the target and V snares basically are on the vesicle. So here's the V snare on the vesicle, and we'll pick an ugly pink, hot pink for the T-snare, and these work in pairs. 
So what you have is two sets of interactions. You have the RAB GTPase interacts with the RAB effector, and you have the V snares recognize the T snares. So what happens is the, the snares mediate vesicle fusion. And if you just relied on this, there would be some specificity, but it's not enough to make it highly specific because the snare, V snare, T snare interaction, while it has some specificity, it's not a highly specific binding interaction. So you would get some low level of inappropriate vesicle fusion if you relied just on those pairings. So that's why layered on top of that, you have this RAB effector, RAB uh, interaction that acts as an initial handshake. So I'll show you exactly how these things work together. So, so the first step is, we'll just go to a more conventional color, is first you have RAB binds the RAB effector. And that initially provides some specificity. So the two membranes are tethered together, but again, that's that on its own is not a highly specific reaction, but what that does is starts a timer. And that timer is GTP hydrolysis. So what does that mean? What it means is that in the presence of GT, normally the RAB is loaded with GTP, it's on the ER vesicle, and its rate of hydrolysis is super low. But when it interacts with a RAB effector of the appropriate class, the RAB effector acts as a gap. So the rate of hydrolysis massively increases. And when this hydrolysis occurs, they let go. So it sets a timer for that tethering reaction for the snares to find each other, pair and mediate fusion. So what you have is an initial interaction that tethers. And so even if this is wrong, what happens is it sets a time limit on the tethering so that if you're at the wrong vesicle compartment pairing, the V snare and T snare may not be an optimal fit and would be unlikely to pair in the time remaining before GTP hydrolysis occurs. So it starts the timer and then before GTP hydrolysis, so the snares snares must pair. Sounds like a, a Dr. Seuss phrase, which is probably appropriate for, for this class in terms of being at UCSD. So, so the snares must pair with each other. So you need a V-snare, T-snare pairing, and then you get vesicle fusion. So just to run through this, what you have is the RAB binds the RAB effector, that puts a time limit on the getting a productive V-snare, T-snare pairing. So before the GTP gets hydrolyzed and the vesicles fall away from each other, the snares must pair. And when the snares pair, they trigger vesicle fusion. 